Headquarters in Geneva, the World Meteorological Organization, or WMO, which is a specialized agency under the United Nations and advises them of the behavior of the atmosphere, the oceans, and the interaction between the two. Now, the meteorological community is global. What that means is people all around the world, every hour of the day, every hour of the night, take weather readings. They look at the sky, decide what the clouds are like what the pressure is, what the temperature is, and send all that information back into central computers, which enable us to do the weather forecast anything up to 10 days ahead. And as we go through this coming century and see all the changes in climate that we expect, I think the World Meteorological Organization is going to become increasingly important in advising all its member states and it's virtually every country in the world on the services they need to provide for our welfare. This revolutionized weather forecasting. It is a model of a European geostationary satellite which sits 35,000 kilometers above the equator over Africa and it revolves around the Earth once every day which means it stays in the same position and every half an hour takes a photograph of the cloud below it. And if we strategically place five of these around the globe, one over Africa, one over the Indian Ocean, the Western Pacific, the Eastern Pacific and the Western Atlantic, we can get a complete picture of the cloud over the whole of the Earth every half an hour. We get visual pictures, but we also get infrared, which means we can use this at night as well. And it also shows us what the water vapor content is like. And that is very important in meteorology. One of the other sensors on board tells us what the temperature is like right the way down through the atmosphere to the surface of the sea and indeed below the sea surface too. And future generations of these will have even more sensors on board to give us a much better understanding of the atmosphere and hence a much better chance of getting a good weather forecast. So what does global warming mean to these mountainous areas? Well the theory goes like this. As we see this rapid change in climate over the next few years we're more than likely to see much more in the way of precipitation in the winter time and in these high mountainous areas that means much more in the way of snow and a much greater risk of these destructive avalanches that we've seen recently. And as the temperatures lift even more quickly in the springtime the snow will melt and this water running down into the valleys will give us much more in the way of flooding. Global warming will certainly interfere with water supplies and in some places get rid of them altogether. Now that's not going to be the case here at Lake Geneva, a world symbol of fresh water. But because of all the pollutants we put into the atmosphere and the fertilizers that leach out of the ground, maybe even here in 30 years time, the water will be undrinkable.